if you're ready. So, um, okay, uh, welcome to the last seminar on, in this seminar series. And uh, uh, this week we have two speakers. We have Kaushik Malik from uh, Max Planck Institute uh, giving the first talk on a negotiation framework for distributed reactive synthesis. And uh, we have a second talk by Kishore Jyoti Murugan from the University of Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, so first Kaushik will talk and then uh, Kishore will talk. Okay. So I think uh, you can start Kaushik. Mm -hmm. Please unmute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, all the organizers for inviting me to give a talk here. So I'm going to uh, present a recent work that I did with Rupak, Anne Katrin Schmuck, and Damian Zuferai here at Max Planck Institute for Software Systems in Germany. Um, <clears throat> and this is still an ongoing project. So uh, the problem that we consider in this work is uh, the distributed reactive synthesis, where we have a system uh, that has multiple interacting uh, components, and we want to synthesize uh, distributed controllers for these uh, components so that certain given uh, specifications are satisfied. And uh, our approach uh, uh, involves uh, the components engaging in a negotiation in order to resolve conflicts by means of making promises and return promises to each other. So before we go into the details of uh, uh, the technical details, let me first uh, explain the, the basic idea of the negotiation uh, using a very simple intuitive example. So suppose that we have uh, a drone and a vehicle and they have been assigned a task of uh, delivering two different objects of two different colors to two locations in a building. Uh, suppose uh, that there is also uh, some external disturbance, such as a gust of wind or maybe some, uh, some water uh, spills on the floor, which hinders the movement of the, of, the, of the two robots. And the final overall objective is to come up with distributed controllers for these two systems so that this specification is satisfied no matter what disturbance uh, we are experiencing during runtime, as long as the disturbance uh, comes from some bounded range, uh, which is known a priori. Now, uh, to make this a bit more interesting, let us assume that none of the two systems can actually satisfy the specification on its own. So for instance, the drone can fly to level one, but uh, because of these narrow passageways here, uh, it cannot uh, uh, navigate through it and it might collide uh, in the presence of the wind. And assume that the vehicle, uh, on the other hand, uh, if it is in level one, it can, even though it can navigate uh, and uh, deliver the orange box, but it cannot reach level one in the first place, uh, unless the drone uh, takes it and drops it and like uh, carries it and drops it to level one. So we can see that uh, these kind of problems often uh, gives rise to uh, situations where the, the components or the agents, they need to collaborate uh, uh, with each other in order to fulfill some task. Now, if there was a central server which had access to uh, the models of the systems and the task specifications, then this central server could serve the role of a supervisor and do a centralized synthesis and then uh, uh, could then uh, decompose the, the, the synthesized plan in terms of a, a local decentralized controller and pass to the individual systems. And uh, this type of centralized or at least semi-centralized approaches uh, have, uh, uh, have uh, uh, been used by other authors uh, in, term, in, the, in the context of uh, distributed reactive synthesis. But in this work, we assume that there is no such central server. Uh, moreover, we assume that the systems have only a, an imperfect uh, view of the other systems model. And uh, this prevents one of the system playing the role of a central server and doing the centralized synthesis. Now, the problem of distributed reactive synthesis is known to be undecidable, thanks to a seminal work of uh, Pneumeli and Rosner from 1990. What we propose in this work is a sound and incomplete uh, solution of the problem where the components, they engage uh, in a negotiation with each other and come up with uh, some distribution of the task. And uh, the, out the outcome of the negotiation 
is a, a set of assumed guarantee contracts, which are basically a formalization of promises made to the other components. And these assumed guarantee contracts are specified using the interface variable in this imperfect information channel. And uh, because of uh, because we are using these assumed guarantee contracts over these interface variables, our approach is also modular in the sense that once the negotiation has been uh, completed and we have obtained these contracts, now we can uh, plug and play uh, different uh, components uh, in the system as long as their basic uh, functionality is the same and also the interface variables, they do not change uh, by uh, the switching of components. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, show you how this negotiation algorithm will look like at a very intuitive level for this particular example. So the negotiation, let's say the, the vehicle uh, starts this negotiation process. So uh, what it does is it first does some computation and uh, it, uh, it, 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 it realizes that uh, on its own, it can only deliver the yellow box because it can reach level zero without any problem, but not the orange one. So it tells the drone that you delivered the orange box and let me do the yellow one. Now uh, notice here that the vehicle, because it has an imperfect information of the drone, it does not know what the drone is capable of. So namely, it does not know that the drone cannot uh, do this task that, is, that uh, it is asking for. So uh, now the drone uh, uh, does some computation again, and it, uh, it realizes that it cannot do what the vehicle is asking for. It tells this to the vehicle, and it, in exchange, it uh, suggests that uh, uh, let me do uh, the yellow box because there is no obstacle in level zero, and uh, you can do the orange box. Um, now uh, the vehicle, uh, it realizes that it cannot reach level one uh, unless the drone can help it. So the vehicle asks the drone, okay, so I can do what you are asking for, but then you have to first help me to reach uh, level one. And uh, the, for the drone, this is a perfectly uh, plausible uh, plan because uh, uh, first it can uh, uh, take the vehicle to uh, level one and after that it can take care of the yellow box and that way both of the boxes will be delivered. So this is how they uh, reach uh, a successful negotiation. And uh, uh, in the end, uh, what we get is uh, this set of promises that they made to each other. And uh, uh, this set of promises are uh, uh, formalized, as I already mentioned, using assume guarantee contracts. So what are they? So uh, the assume guarantee contract for the drone is consists of two parts. So the first part is the assumption part, which is the promise made by the vehicle, which is the other system to the drone. And the second part is the guarantee part, which is the promise made by the drone to the vehicle. Right? And similarly, uh, this is symmetric for uh, the vehicle as well. Now, uh, once uh, the negotiation uh, has ended, and if, and as I mentioned, if you remember that the negotiation is a sound uh, but incomplete procedure in our case. So if you manage to find uh, such set of contracts, so then uh, what, what we need to do is uh, we need to replace the, the, the given task of these two systems by uh, this augmented specification. So where now, uh, instead of uh, considering the, the given task, we, are, uh, we only uh, are interested in finding a controller uh, for uh, this specification. So what it says. So the first part says that the specification now needs to be satisfied only when the assumption is fulfilled by the other system. And the second part says that the contract needs to be fulfilled. So uh, let us. Uh, so the first part is just when assumption and specification are omega regular properties. So the first part is also an omega regular property. So let us uh, 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 try to understand what this uh, second part means. Like, what uh, does it exactly mean to satisfy a contract? Well, we say that uh, uh, the drone will satisfy the contract if it can position itself uh, uh, in the in the in the beginning in such a way that uh, in future. Uh, there is a strategy to satisfy uh, the guarantees. Now, from all the next time steps, what is uh, what the drone has to uh, uh, do is to uh, ensure that the guarantee is satisfied only if the, specific, the assumptions have been satisfied by the vehicle in all the past time instances. And if the drone has a strategy so that this, this, uh, uh, this conditional uh, satisfaction of the contract is, uh, uh, can be fulfilled, then we say that the drone can realize the contract. And similarly for the vehicle. So now once we uh, have the contract from the negotiation, all we need to do is we need to modify the specification and then we need to find a strategy, which is a realization strategy for these uh, uh, augmented specification. And that will be the controller that we were looking for in the beginning. Um, 
And uh, what we uh, get out of this is uh, if the if both of the systems they satisfy their assume guarantee uh, contracts, then this will imply uh, with a chain of inequalities uh, the satisfaction of the specification. And this can be roughly uh, shown by uh, by doing an induction over time. Now, uh, this type of assume guarantee reasoning for circular uh, uh, systems, it's not nothing, it's, it's not anything new. So this has been uh, in existence in uh, verification community or in other uh, synthesis contexts as well. But uh, mostly what we have realized is that people look into, uh, people assume that the contracts are given and uh, we are interested in proving correctness uh, of, uh, by, by, by proposing some proof rule. But here, what we are doing, what is new in some sense, is that we are starting from the system model and the specification, and then we are synthesizing the contracts in such a way that they are compatible. Now, the closest related work is uh, perhaps uh, this uh, uh, 2015 paper by Rajiv and others, uh, where uh, they do a pattern-based refinement of assumed guarantee contracts. So, uh, but uh, in their work, uh, unlike us, they only consider one-way interaction uh, between the system. And uh, uh, and uh, so so you can see uh, whereas we consider two way interaction uh, among the system, and uh, also uh, we use a completely different kind of approach uh, uh, in our work. So uh, the plan for the rest of the talk is that I'm going to now go into the technical details of uh, how we can. Uh, define the problem, like what, what, what is the kind of system that we consider? What is the kind of specification? And then after that, and I'll, I'll do this using this uh, example of, uh, of the drone and the vehicle. And after that, I'll use that to, uh, to, to show how the negotiation process look like, looks like in a, at a technical level. And then finally, I'll close with uh, some experimental results. So now uh, the, we assume that the system models are given to us in the form of uh, finite state transition systems. And these transition systems, so, uh, so this is the transition system for the drone and this is for the vehicle. And uh, these transition systems, they essentially capture the three-way interaction between the system, the other system, and the external environment. Now, uh, uh, so the uh, vertices of these uh, transition system, they are the states of the system. And the labels that we that you see here, they are basically uh, the observable behavior, the observable behavior of the system. So meaning that uh, when the drone is in, uh, uh, or let's say, like when the vehicle is either of these two states, so then the drone observes uh, uh, the idle behavior from the vehicle, and observe that uh, for one observable behavior, the, uh, the 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 system can be in multiple multiple possible states. And this is the partial observability that I previously talked about. Um, now uh, let us, uh, okay, so now uh, the three-way interaction that I mentioned uh, is uh, modeled using, uh, using a, a turn-based uh, fashion. So where we have uh, partitioned the state space of the, of the system into three parts. So the first uh, type of states are the ones, which are the circles, which are controlled by the system which means that uh, when the system is in a circular state, the system can choose one of the outgoing edges to choose the successor. Um, when, the, uh, when the system is uh, in uh, one of the diamond shaped states, so these are the environment control states and the environment chooses the successor and these are shown by dashed arrows. And uh, when the system is in a square state, so these are the states which are uh, controlled by the other system. And as you can see that uh, the transitions, the outgoing transitions from the square states are labeled with the observables of the other system. So here, uh, when we are in wait, when the drone is in wait state, so then it can either go to A or remain here, depending on whether the other system is producing observable capital A or idle. Um, now, uh, there are these uh, special states uh, orange and yellow, and we have labeled here in this case uh, the the boxes A and B, and we assume for simplicity that uh, it is required that A needs to be delivered before B. So here the orange states are basically uh, uh, the those states of the drone where the drone has sensed that A has been delivered, and uh, the yellow state is the one where the drone has sensed that both of the boxes have been delivered. 
right? And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, so now if we if we look at the overall uh, transition and what uh, what it means is that you can see like uh, what uh, so this basically models all the uh, features that I mentioned earlier that when the drone tries to deliver a then the environment can make it crash to the wall and it might uh, not be able to satisfy the specification. Whereas uh, 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 the other option for the drone is to lift the vehicle to level one and then wait for the vehicle to uh, deliver A and then after that deliver B and so on. And similarly for the vehicle, right? And uh, now given uh, these two, uh, uh, this kind of transition system for these two uh, uh, components and given their local specifications uh, uh, in terms of some omega regular properties uh, specified using their uh, states of the system. So, okay, so one thing I forgot to mention here for simplicity, I assume that the specifications are the same for both of the system, but this does not have to be the case. Um, so given all these ingredients, what we want to achieve is one, we want to uh, find a procedure that will give us um, uh, a pair of assume guarantee contracts for these two systems. And uh, notice here that uh, for the drone, the assumption has to be uh, given in terms of the observable behavior of the, uh, of, the, of the vehicle. Whereas the guarantee has to be given in terms of the observable behavior of the drone itself. And similarly for the vehicle, right? Uh, so by the way, so please feel free to ask questions if you have any. So, uh, if this was clear, uh, then uh, let me uh, straight away jump to the, the negotiation algorithm. So now uh, the negotiation algorithm uh, is an iterative procedure. So it, uh, it proceeds in, uh, in rounds. Uh, and uh, initially, one of the systems starts the negotiation. Let's say the drone starts the negotiation. So initially, uh, it has the trivial contract, which, is, which says, so here the top symbol means like all possible behaviors are allowed. So here, uh, it means that the drone assumes that all possible behaviors are allowed from the vehicle. And uh, in, in return, the drone can also produce any all possible behaviors. And this is the drone specification itself. So uh, initially, uh, we start with this kind of contract. And what we do is in every iteration, we uh, uh, keep on refining the current contracts based on, uh, yeah, we keep on refining the uh, current contracts. And, uh, <clears throat> Um, yeah, and uh, one, one possibility is that uh, in the beginning, uh, both of the systems can satisfy their specifications without any help from the other system. In that case, there is no need for any negotiation. In that case, the, the trivial contract, the pair of trivial contracts is the uh, outcome of the negotiation, you can say. Otherwise, as you can see here, uh, the, the, the drone uh, which wants to reach AB it might need some help uh, to resolve these kind of self loops from the other system. So let's see how it proceeds. So first, uh, the drone realizes that this move, like where it starts from in it, uh, for, from the initial state, and if it goes towards the left, so then the environment, which is the external uh, entity, and this is adversarial from which we cannot expect any help, can, uh, can uh, make the system crash and uh, make the system uh, lose the game, like falsify the specification. So this is not an option, right? So uh, the other two paths, so there the uh, vehicle can uh, producing this idle observable can uh, trap the drone in these two states forever, right? And the drone might not be able to reach AP. So what the drone now needs to tell is to come up with some uh, sufficient assumption on the behavior of the vehicle so that uh, that will allow the drone to satisfy its current specification, right? And uh, we, uh, we, we only restrict ourselves to uh, safety languages for specifying this sufficient assumption. And this is simply because it is not clear to us like how to uh, prove correctness of circular assume guarantee reasoning when the assumptions and guarantees are given to us as liveness languages. Um, and uh, so this is still a restriction. And as I said, this is still uh, an ongoing work. And uh, uh, here, I, one thing I would like to say here, okay, so here, uh, first of all, uh, you, you, can, you can verify that this is indeed a sufficient assumption. So what it says is that uh, in the next two time steps from the beginning, uh, idle should not occur. So, uh, and that will enable the drone to immediately, uh, so after reaching weight, immediately move to A, right? So we are basically blocking the self loops to uh, happen uh, at all. 
I mean, another option would be uh, that uh, to be a bit more rela bit, bit more lenient and say that uh, idle should not occur after n time step or so on. And yeah, this is perfectly possible where instead of these two, you can you, you could you can have any like bounded number bounded uh, integer there. Uh, now. Uh, the way we uh, come up with this safe sufficient assumption, this involves a solution of uh, some instance of reactive synthesis problem. And uh, this actually uh, is an adopted version of uh, the algorithm that has been uh, proposed by Krishnendu Chatterjee and others in this uh, uh, 2008 paper. So now uh, that we have uh, obtained uh, this first set of assumption from the uh, drone, the vehicle, this the vehicle now needs to uh, take this assumption into account as a part of guarantee that it needs to provide in future rounds of the negotiation, right? And uh, now uh, that the so now uh, the the vehicle's effective uh, specification is this one. It still doesn't have any assumption yet because it hasn't made any assumption uh, so far. And now uh, uh, the vehicle now has to again uh, come up with uh, some additional set of assumptions that are required. So, for instance, uh, if it wants to uh, uh, make sure that uh, this guarantee is satisfied, so it has to make sure that this self loop here uh, is uh, not taken by the by the drone, right? I mean, otherwise uh, there is no way the vehicle can uh, avoid uh, producing an idle in the second time step. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, the second part comes from the fact that the vehicle also has its own specification, right? And uh, this uh, gives us uh, this gives us uh, 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 the new set of assumption, which now the drone has to take into account as a set of guarantees, and uh, uh, also the set of assumption that the drone uh, uh, made in the previous round of the negotiation. They also uh, come here as part of the uh, contract now. And uh, you can see like uh, now the drone can uh, satisfy the specification and this new specification by taking uh, this path. And uh, this will essentially end the negotiation. And uh, uh, in the end, we get uh, uh, these as our output contracts. Uh, uh, right? And uh, yeah, and the features of this negotiation uh, as I already mentioned, is that it is sound but incomplete, uh, and uh, this is incomplete due to various reasons. Uh, we have uh, made some, uh, yeah, we, we have made some remarks in the paper. If you are interested, uh, yeah, please uh, do check. Um, okay. I have a question. Yes. The uh, why do you want to use uh, temporal logic here instead of say automata? to capture these uh, assumptions, particularly when you are refining them? Yeah, so so actually they are uh, they are uh, represented using automata, using uh, regular automata, and they are safety languages. But here I used uh, temporal logic just for uh, clarity, just for simpler uh, presentation purposes. Oh, okay, 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 that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I will just quickly go over the experiment. So we, uh, we implemented uh, this negotiation algorithm in a tool called Agnes, and uh, uh, we performed a, a bunch of experiments. So one of them is this mutual exclusion example, where there are two processes. They are trying to send some data over uh, using a shared bus, and there is no uh, handshake protocol uh, uh, involved. So each time they want to share a data, they just need to write it in the transmission end and the data will be shared. And uh, if uh, both of them are trying to write the data at the same time, then the bus rejects the data from both of them in order to avoid corruption. And now uh, uh, they, they both of them have some deadline in order to, uh, before when uh, they need to uh, send the data. And now you can imagine like uh, they need to somehow uh, uh, have some uh, kind of arrangement that uh, not both of them uh, try to attempt to send the data at the same time, otherwise they will be stuck forever. And uh, when we applied our, uh, our tool and uh, we indeed found, uh, uh, found success, successfully found uh, contracts which uh, enabled them to be able to satisfy this specification. And this is actually a parametric uh, example where uh, the parameters are the number of data packets and the deadline and so on. And by varying parameters, we uh, managed to create different instances of the problem with different sizes of the state space. So the x-axis here shows the size of the product uh, state. And uh, 
the y-axis shows the computation time in seconds. And as you can see that even for reasonably large uh, systems, we managed to find solution for uh, like within like one minute or so. And uh, yeah, these uh, contracts uh, in indeed like uh, uh, they, they, they turned out to be like uh, sound contracts. Uh, that is, we managed to find uh, successfully controllers for them. Uh, to summarize, uh, I, 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 I showed you uh, uh, um, a sound modular and incomplete uh, approach for distributed synthesis, which kind of mimics uh, the negotiation procedure that uh, humans uh, do all the time uh, to resolve conflicts. And uh, uh, the, the inputs to the procedure are the systems model in using a, a finite state transition system and omega regular uh, specification over the local states. And uh, what we, uh, uh, we, we, we have the restriction that the systems have partial view of each other. And uh, the output of the procedure is a set of assume guarantee contracts. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, we also uh, we also propose some optimization heuristic for faster computation, which basically compresses the assumptions into smaller automata, and that is really useful for when the negotiation goes uh, for uh, many number of rounds and so on. Um, and uh, we implemented our uh, procedure in this tool called Agnes, which can be freely downloaded from this link. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions? So uh, if you have a question, you can uh, either write something on, in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask. Um, perhaps I can ask the first question. Uh, can you explain what goes wrong if your assumptions and guarantees are uh, Leibniz languages rather, or you know, in general, Omega regular languages rather than uh, yeah. safety languages? Yeah, I mean, uh... So basically, we don't have a correctness proof of the circular assumed guarantee reasoning with liveness uh, 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 assumption and liveness guarantees yet. So the thing that works in safety is that we can uh, we can uh, we can look at back at the traces and look back at the behavior and judge whether the uh, system had satisfied the assumption or guarantee. But for liveness, this is uh, no longer true because for liveness, we now have to be able to see in the future whether something is going to be satisfied eventually or so on. And this is, uh, uh, this is a bit tricky. It, I, I would say there is no problem. It's just that we have not figured out yet like how to do it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, maybe I'll ask you to uh, stop sharing the screen and uh, and uh, I, I, let me thank you again uh, on behalf of the, uh, all the organizers. And uh, perhaps we should we can move to Kishore's 